Hello everyone, I'm Ashish Sangal. I'm the Director of Thoracic Oncology and Clinical Research at the Cancer Institute at Good Samaritan Hospital. It's a pleasure to be here today talking about lung cancer screening, including the new guidelines. And uh, as we talk about lung cancer, we know it's the number one cause of cancer-related death across the world, both in men and women. When we look into the statistics, the next three common cancers, whether we talk about colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, breast or prostate put together, and still, unfortunately, lung cancer leads the way. And that is the total concern with this devastating disease, is how can we decrease the burden of this number one cancer killer. When we look into the statistics behind uh, lung cancer, we look into is, unfortunately, this cancer is diagnosed quite late, more than 50 to 60 percent of the cancer is by the time symptoms are there, and that leads to increased mortality. Also we know that the data is that if we diagnose this cancer early, that is where we have a chance to cure it, potentially surgically resect it, and then can improve the survival. So when we look into that, we definitely know the number one preventive way of preventing or number one cause of intervention to prevent lung cancer is smoking. So there's no two things about it. But also, trying to do a proper screening where we can find a way to diagnose these cancers early has led for us to look into the path where we can decrease the burden of this cancer. So that led to lung screening. So what is screening? Screening is something where we find a cancer early before the symptoms are more pronounced because unfortunately, as we talked about, once the symptoms are there, it's already quite late for us to improve the survival. So trying to detect a cancer early by a proper screening is the way to go about it. Unfortunately, until almost a decade ago, there was no proper screening. There were things like uh, chest x-rays and sputum tests, which were not beneficial for us to make a survival benefit and decrease the death. Until uh, 2002, there was a pivotal study which was done over a period of five years where almost more than 50,000 patients were enrolled to look for a screening in high-risk population by doing uh, CT scans in a 55 to 75-year-old patients who had smoked more than, more than 30 pack year smoking history and then also had formerly smoked not beyond 30 years. So this patient population, when we looked into uh, the total statistics, which was published eventually in 2011 in the New England Journal of Medicine, we did find a decrease of 20% cancer-related death. So that was quite significant. This, if I look into, is if a lung cancer screening with low-dose CT scans done over 320 around people, you definitely save one life. This is, again, significant. For example, if I look into a breast cancer uh, screening or mammograms, you need more than 1,300 to find one or, or save one life. So having somewhere around 300 is quite significant. So more cancers can be detected at an early stage. This was the first time a study showed that by screening, you can prevent a cancer-related death up to 20%. So these results, which were uh, announced in 2010, were also published in the New England Journal in 2011. So this is the data behind that, which led primarily to us being uh, approved for lung cancer screening with ages between 55 to 80. I have put in there because now more recently from the United States Preventive Services Task Force, which we call USPSTF, uh, the age has decreased to 50, so that has been the recommendation as of March 2021. Uh, the guidelines were also, if you are a current smoker or a former smoker, more than 30 pack year smoking history. Again, uh, USPSTF, as of last month, has suggested and has announced uh, more of endorsing less than 20 pack year smoking history. This has also been endorsed by the American College of Radiology, and I'm hoping with time even Medicare is going to adapt to this. So again, more than 50 to 55 year age old, more than 20 to 30 pack year smoking history. If you are a current or a former smoker, you automatically are at high risk. If you're a smoker, if you have any symptoms of shortness of breath or new cough or change in cough, 
hemoptysis, you still are eligible for this. So again, this is something which I wanted to talk about is the USPSTF guidelines, which we just were mentioning about, was announced on March 9, 2021. Again, ages between 50 to 80, more than 20 pack year smoking history, current or a former smoker within this period of time in the past 20 years, they are all eligible to be screened for a low dose CT scan. So what is the benefit of low dose CT scan? It's detecting the lung cancer early. And as we know, the data supports if we find a lung cancer early, we can cure them. It's curable. So decreasing the chance of dying from lung cancer. We know seven million patients or people are eligible for potential low dose CT scan screening based on even the previous guidelines in the past 10 years. And this number is only going to go up. This could potentially improve and save up to 20,000 or more lives. Unfortunately, all we have is less than 4% of this patient population is out there who have been screened. So we definitely have opportunities out there, and we need to work on that through the, through, through the information of who all are eligible and how we can do it. Because who are at risk? The, you know, risks are people who are at high risk of smoking and over a period of 30 years and beyond. But even 20 years and high smoking history, they are eligible. There are risks involved with screening. They could be false positive or they could be false negative. False positive, finding a nodule or a lung spot, which is mostly more than 95% could be non-cancerous, is something that we detect. And it can lead to more testing. It can be a false negative. So if you have a CT scan which is normal, doesn't mean that you don't have a cancer or you may not have it. So we need to be we need to look at the complete clinical picture, and that's why having a CT scan done in a more well-established lung center program where you have all the specialists together is also pivotal in the complete lung cancer screening program. Radiation exposure, there has been a lot talk about it. Uh, when we compare to a regular CT scan, our radiation exposure is around 20 to 25 percent. It almost sums up to almost like 12 chest x-rays done over a period of time is equivalent to what the radiation exposure is. Sometimes as we do it in the environment, uh, exposure from the environment can be up to uh, six months of exposure from regular environment. Uh, what are the other risks, like radiation exposure from a, uh, you know, uh, it, it's very minimal, and only the, with having a low dose CT scan, what do you expect when you take, it, take a patient out there? You expect within a minute you'll get a scan done. It's, it's a machine where you don't need any contrast, and, and so the overall period time spent there is very minimal. Uh, what do the results mean for a specialist and for a team? If you have a negative scan, that means no spots, nothing in the lung scene, you, we usually off suggest an annual non-contrast low-dose CT scan as a part of the screening. If we have a positive scan, of course we refer, either we'll, we'll schedule a biopsy or suggest for further workup. And sometimes we are in the middle, whereas there's an indeterminate nodule or something that may be a spot which is found in most of the cases. And then case to case, it's determined whether we need to pursue a short-term CT scan or pursue any other workup. This is a picture which we look into from a scan standpoint is what we look from a nodule. So if we, what if we have a nodule or a spot? We recommend a couple of things based on the size of the nodule, and there are certain well-established guidelines, including the Fleschner criteria, uh, either we can follow up within a three to six month short interval CT scan, we can order a PET CT scan based on information that we have to look into what we, what we, are, what we need to do, or we can refer to a lung specialist, like an interventional pulmonologist or an interventional radiologist or a surgeon to look into that for further diagnostic and potentially therapeutic benefit from it. While we're talking about lung screening, it has been well endorsed, including from the CMS guidelines and if, including uh, Medicare, and an annual CT scan has been well approved in the past eight, nine years now. So it's covered by Medicare. They have their own guidelines of age 55 to 77, having more than 30 pack year smoking history for a current or a former smoker. Again, with the new United States uh, Preventive Services Task Force or the USPSTF guidelines as of last month, as we discussed earlier, having less than 20 pack year smoking history or age around 50, so we are coming close or less in the age part, 
This hopefully will be also endorsed by Medicare very soon. So again, uh, shared decision visits, these are all endorsed by, by insurance. In Catholic Health, we have a very robust lung cancer screening, screening program. This is a, a program where we have all specialists together, including the thoracic surgeon, medical oncologist, interventional pulmonologist, and radiologist. We also have the radiation oncologist, along with the pathologist, to put things together, not only from the screening standpoint, but also to look for the diagnostic and the therapeutic path. So we have a dedicated multidisciplinary uh, conference for lung cancer to not only look for uh, discussing these cases, but also any potential cancers and how the management is. It provides personalized care for these patients. Uh, we have a program which is across the Long Island area, including the Good Samaritan Hospital. We have a screening program in Mercy Hospital, St. Joseph Hospital, St. Catherine, and also in St. Francis. So we have a, a complete program with all the you know, information out there which we can provide um, as we talk about this. We also need to talk about what's the future direction in lung cancer screening. <clears throat> we, we talked about the model where uh, smoking and age is a high risk for putting together. We're also looking for other factors which can determine who, what will be the driving force for recognizing high-risk patients so that they can be screened and we can improve our outcomes in detecting early cancer in high-risk patients. There's a potential look into blood tests which can also be, looked, can be screened for, and that can be, uh, that's an area of research right now and potentially can be put together with the lung screening program. So in summary, we talk about lung cancer screening, but low-dose CT scan, it decreases the death related to lung cancer. Screening is not appropriate for everyone. Only those who benefit are the ones who have high risk for it. Again, age more than 50, as per New York guidelines, smoked more than 20 pack year smoking history, or a former smoker who has any new changes in his symptoms, they're all eligible for this. Lung cancer screening should not be it should be done only in a structured program. And I would stress on that. This is important because you need a complete specialized team of lung cancer who not only deal with screening part, but can also help you with diagnosis and treatment. So a complete specialized center who has the complete team of radiology and also how to look for management of lung cancer once we find one, or a nodule as it's been detected. So having a pulmonologist, a thoracic surgeon, an interventional radiologist, along with a medical oncologist and radiation oncologist, they all come together, and that's the stress of it. And again, as I talk about lung cancer screening, it doesn't take us away from something that we always talk about is smoking cessation. Smoking cessation remains the number one preventive cause of lung cancer. And again, with lung cancer screening, we can only add to it to decrease the burden of this devastating disease and hopefully improve the, the total number of lung cancer screenings that we do across the country. As we know, as we talked about previously, less than only 4% has been screened so far. So we need to improve those numbers. So more awareness, more information which is out there, and hopefully even in the Catholic Health System and lung cancer screening program that we have, we hope to improve that better. With that, I can only talk about better hope, better fight for this cancer, and also we all breathe better. For more information, we have a number, 631-376-4444. You can contact that number, or also you can visit our site at www.goodsamcancerinstitute.org. Again, you can either call us or reach out for us on that website for any additional information. And that's all for today. Thank you.